great. I'd like to welcome everybody to my home. We're going to talk about a great new book, The Encyclopedia of Kitchen and Cooking Secrets, with over 25,000 chefs and grandmother's secrets from all over the world. This is not a cookbook. This is going to be a lot of fun, and it's different from anything you'll ever see in any bookstore in the world. Let's start out right here. If you're going to fry anything, make sure you put a teaspoon of white vinegar in the frying oil before you start heating the oil. That'll reduce the amount of fat that is absorbed into the food by about 40%. Works great. Now, here's a good trick. Peppers tend to cause burping. We don't want any burping, so all you do is take a vegetable peeler, peel the outside of the pepper before you start cutting it up. That'll eliminate about 90% of the burpiness of the pepper. Now, this is I thought was going to be uh, an old wives' tale, but it really isn't, and I thought it was going to be. Cucumbers tend to have a problem with bitterness, regular cucumbers. All you have to do is take a knife, cut off about an inch from either end, Take the two exposed surfaces, rub them together in a circular motion. Believe it or not, that'll eliminate the bitterness from the cucumber. It works great. It'll work every single time. Now, if you want to degas beans, and this is something most people really want to know about, all you do is use some fennel seed. Put a teaspoon of fennel seed in the water you're soaking your beans in when you're soaking them overnight. That'll neutralize the complex carbohydrate that's in the beans and it'll eliminate the gassiness. Now, you can also serve rice and beans together. This works real well because there's a chemical in rice that eliminates the problem of the gassiness as well. That's why it's safe to go to a, a Mexican restaurant because you get rice and beans with your meal. Now, never serve a cold tomato. When you can store a tomato in the refrigerator, but always leave it out at room temperature for 20 or 30 minutes before you serve it, because it deactivates the acid in the tomato in the refrigerator, and you lose your aroma and flavor of the tomato. When you leave it at room temperature, it reactivates the acid, you get your aroma and flavor back in the tomato. Now, if you're going to choose steak in the supermarket, it'll probably be better than this one, <laughs> but this will do. Uh, you want to take a look at the color of the fat around the outside of the steak. If the color of the fat is white, it's going to be a tender steak. If the fat is yellow or yellowish, it's not going to be tender. It's going to be a little tough, so you want to be careful of that. Now, if you're going to make pancakes, what chefs do to get the lightest pancake, and these are really light. Now, what you want to do is use club soda in place of milk or water the liquid you normally use in your recipe. The pancakes will be so light, they'll float around the house, you'll have trouble finding them, so keep the windows and doors shut. Now, this is very important for baking. You must know the age of an egg when you're baking. It's extremely important. You want to take a big bowl, fill it full of cold water. Take an egg, drop it in, not from too high up or it won't matter. Let it go to the bottom. If it lies on its side, it's fresh. If it goes to the bottom and stands up at a 45 degree angle, it's three to five days old and perfect for an omelet or meringue. If it goes to the bottom and stands up at a 90 degree angle, it's about 10 to 14 days old. Perfect for hard boiled eggs, deviled eggs, works great. If it floats to the top of the water, take it out, bury it in the backyard along with your banana skins and use it for fertilizer. And if you're real lucky, you may grow an eggplant. If you believe that one, we'll tell you another one. Now, when you're making beef stew, what you want to do, and the French do this all the time because they have a lot of wine corks, but take some wine corks. Put three to four wine corks in your beef stew. There's a chemical in natural cork that comes out in the hot water and tenderizes the beef. Just make sure you take the corks out before you serve it to a guest. Very important. Now, butter. Make sure you never put butter in a microwave unless it's a unless it's at room temperature. If you put it in the microwave cold from the refrigerator, you lose 80 to 90 percent of the aroma and flavor of the butter. Chefs will always have butter at room temperature before they melt the butter. So keep that in mind. Now, if you want to store cheese so that it won't get moldy, 
Take a well-sealed plastic container, put a piece of paper towel on the bottom, lightly dampened with white vinegar. Put your cheese in there, and then put three to four little sugar cubes in there. Seal it up real good, and if there's any mold spores in there, they'll be killed by the white vinegar, or go to the sugar cubes and eat the sugar cubes and leave your cheese alone. Now, cottage cheese, you want to make sure you store it upside down. If you store it upside down, it'll last seven to ten days longer because you suffocate the spores in here, and it really works well. Same with a two-liter soda bottle. Put it upside down in the refrigerator after you open it. It'll keep the carbonation for three to four weeks. It just, it works great. Now, if you're making a roast, roasts sometimes have a lot of fat layer on top of the roast. What you want to do is take some dry mustard and sprinkle it on top of the roast. What that'll do is seal the fat so the fat won't get into the roast, but it'll allow the seasonings to get into the roast. And also, this, this is really something that caught my attention. If you want to store herbs for a longer period of time, herbs only, fresh herbs only last for two or three days at the absolute most. Take some fresh herbs, put them in a plastic bag, blow into the bag as hard as you can, seal the bag up as fast as you can, and the carbon dioxide from your breath will preserve the herbs for up to a week. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this. I'll tell you, this is the number one kitchen reference book in the United States and Canada with over 4 million sold. Remember, it's not a cookbook. It's the most complete kitchen reference book ever published. It's got more usable information than any book on food that you can possibly find. And I'll tell you, there are hundreds of books in the bookstores, cookbooks. There isn't one kitchen reference book like this one. 25,000 secrets.